we now go above and beyond the headlines with infectious disease specialist Dr. Ron uh, Jean Solante. He heads the Adult Infectious Disease and Tropical Medicine section at the San Lazaro Hospital. Good evening, Dr. Solante. Thank you very much for taking our call. Good evening, Pia. It's an opportunity for me to share with you my thoughts on your on this uh, show. Yes, Dr. Solante, let's begin with this. What would your recommendations be post-April 30? Do we uh, lift this uh, ECQ in, in total? Uh, do we have a modified ECQ? Um, uh, do we relax restrictions? Uh, uh, what, what should we do uh, based on your recommendations as a doctor, an infectious disease specialist? Okay, I think first we have to consider, have we flattened the curve in terms of the numbers of cases reported uh, every day? And I think the trend now is I think we are on that, on that uh, objective that we have flattened the curve. Our cases has maintained at least 200 uh, a day. And I think the more important part there is the doubling time of the cases that has been reported has somewhat uh, uh, increased also. So mean, that means that... Uh, we're not reporting more than that what is uh, being reported the past week. So that's that's an improvement itself. But again, it's not flattening the curve that is very important for us. It's really getting to zero, no reported cases of uh, mm. uh, of the infection. That is the objective now. Now, if we're going to lift or totally lift the lockdown, then there's still a possibility that we will have a second wave or more than that we have experienced the past two months. No. And I would say, sayang uh, yung the 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 effort that we have done for the past month. Now, there are areas also that we can selectively lift the lockdown. Like I agree with some of the opinion that uh, we go by each of the city, look at where most of these cases are concentrated, and again, uh, focus on these cities where there are numbers of cases and do some lockdown in these areas. So a specific area should only be locked down. But for those cases that are not reporting any cases of COVID, then most likely they will be the first city that will be on a selective uh, lifting of this uh, particular uh, lockdown. The crucial part here, Pia, is really our capability to do the test. Our, our, our testing centers can accommodate. If we're going to uh, uh, proceed with active surveillance of cities that are currently reporting uh, these uh, uh, COVID cases. Because remember, the data that we have now are only data reported among patients that are admitted in the hospitals. Okay? So we don't have data yet at the level of the community, how many of these have mild symptoms, how many of these are in direct contact with those who are positive, and how many of these are really asymptomatic, but yet they are positive with the uh, COVID infection. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, Dr. Solante, um, we cannot afford to just lift the uh, ECQ on April 30th, uh, and uh, we can't afford also to, to, to have a modified ECQ because, I mean, you know, the fear is ang kinatakutan, kinatatakutan ng ibang tao, eh? baka naman we will lurch from uh, lockdown to relaxed uh, uh, atmosphere, a relaxed situation, and then we have to lurch right back to a lockdown because biglang tataas ang kaso. And, and of course, there, there's the other um, issue there. No, are, are we ready? Are our health facilities ready? And like you said, no, what we should go for is not just flattening the curve, but zero cases. Because are you saying, Doc G, no, if, you, if we have cases, then we have, uh, the, the, we have the, the probability of having people still dying, right? Yes, agree. Agree with you. Now, I, the, the, the important part here is we have to pinpoint now, where are these cases? Where, where, where are the sources of these cases? Which part of Metro Manila? Which, which, which city is reporting the number of cases? And then zero in on this city, in this particular barangay, and do the test, meaning you have to selectively test uh, each of these uh, uh, area where most of these cases are being reported. Because these are also the, the area where most of these people once the lockdown will be lifted, then these are also the people who will be going out and potentially infecting other individuals. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. D Dr. Salanta, I wanted to ask you to, uh, two more questions. No, the, the first one is about the, the test kits. The second one is about the vaccine. No? So first about the test kits. I, I know uh, we have very little, limited time, but I'm hoping that you can um, uh, you know, enlighten us on this. There's a lot of discussion about the differences, you know, how, how far apart or how, um, uh, well, interesting discussion about the rapid test kits and then you have your PCR. Uh, ano ba dapat ang gamitin natin? What is the foolproof test that will show us the real situation? Okay. For now, the gold standard for really determining, identifying who is really actively infected, meaning you have the infection, you're carrying the virus, you are potentially infectious, it's the RT-PCR because that detects the presence of the virus. Now, I think you've heard of the antibody or the rapid antibody test. Right. It, it's, right. it's a different test because it does not directly identify the presence of the virus. Okay? It only identifies mm -hmm. a particular part of the virus, we call it antigen, that your body will react to that and you will produce that antibody. So meaning... The antibody will be produced by your body, and then that will be detected by the kit. So what's the, 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 the essence of that? Meaning, if that antibody is present, it can either be, one, you are probably actively infected, or you are also recovering from the infection. Now, the downside mm -hmm. of the rapid antibody test is that it has also a very low sensitivity, meaning... It cannot totally detect that if it's negative, it doesn't also mean you don't have the virus. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. Dr. Silante, uh, my last question along to the vaccine. No? Can, can you describe to us this, uh, you, uh, the global vaccine R&D landscape, you know, the effort? This is unprecedented. Usually a vaccine, hindi po ba five to ten years bago ma makuha natin yon. But now people are hoping sana by uh, later this year or next year, uh, tell us about these so-called, what you call them, diba? you call them candidates, no? Um, that are in pre-clinical trials. Uh, what have you explained to us in layman's terms what is happening? Because th there are a lot of paranoid people who feel, no, no vaccine, I'm not going out. Uh, we're not returning to normal life, if uh, so-called normal life, if there is no vaccine. What is happening in that uh, regard? Okay, so I think if you've heard in, in most of the articles now, uh, a lot of these countries, but I think the, 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 the front runners here are the ones that are really rich countries like the like United States or Europe because they are already in the advanced stage of really developing a lot of these vaccines. Okay? And if ever vaccine will be, will be developed, then most likely it will also come from big pharmaceuticals who have developed several vaccines in the past. No? The ideal, uh, the, the usually duration of developing a vaccine, it will take around years. Like, for example, I'll give you an example. Uh, the dengue vaccine, it took like more than 15 years to develop because you had to test it mm -hmm. on animals. You test it on, on humans. Before you test it, you have to test it if it will really produce adequate antibody that will protect the individual. And then after that, you have to test it in an animal if there are adverse events, if the animal will not develop the infection while, while giving the vaccine. So there are a lot of uh, what we call in the, uh, uh, observations that you have to, to, or process that you have to observe before you release the vaccines. But with the technology that we have now, I don't think we are looking at more than two or three years that that vaccine is available. Okay? I'm, I'm really uh, positive that within a year, a lot of these pharmaceutical companies now are already in the phase two uh, stage of the development, meaning they already have the molecule. It's just a matter of which which uh, mm -hmm. animals they will be they will, they will be testing and measuring the anti level of that particular vaccine. And I think that's the most important. The only way we can really uh, control this uh, SARS-CoV is really vaccine prevention is always important. Prevention is better than cure. So even if we have a cure, yeah. wala rin naman tayong vaccine, mahirapan tayo. But anyway, Dr. Jean Solante, thank you very much for joining us this evening. I wish we had more time. We'll, we'll see you again. Maraming salamat po, Doc. Thank you. Thank